Hi, I'm Shelly Bostrom, owner and founder of Align My Practice Consulting. And today we're gonna go over three tips and trends to accelerate your practice growth, elevate your team performance, and maximize your success in 2023. Orthomarketing.com, 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice. Well, hello everybody in podcast land. This is Dean Steinman from Ortho Marketing, and we are back with another podcast for you. And I hope everybody is healthy and well. It is springtime today, first day of spring, 2023. And I am very excited to have with me a very special guest. Today I have with me Shelly Bostrom, and Shelly is an orthodontic consultant. Um, she's great, she's, she's got a ton of great information. And I'm very excited to talk today with her. And we're going to discuss a couple of things about the practice and some, some tips that you could do today to take your practice to the next level and elevate your team. As you know, it's all about your team. So, Shelly, how are you today? Hi, Dean. Thanks so much for having me. I am excellent. How oh, are you? <laughs> I am terrific. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I'm excited. It's the first podcast that you're joining us on. So I'm really excited to have you as a, as a guest. And we're going to have a Thank lot of fun. So let's just jump in. Tell us. Who is Shelly? What is, who are you? And what do you do? <laughs> Hello, everyone this in is... podcast land. I'm Shelly Bostrom. I'm the founder and owner of Align My Practice, um, practice consulting, team coaching and training. I have 20 years of experience in the dental and ortho industry. I've worn pretty much every hat in the office except for the doctors. <laughs> um, I've gained lots of wisdom along the way. And it's with great joy that I'm truly just living my passion, being able to um, have the opportunity to empower practice owners and their teams in unlocking their full potential. Oh, that's great. Um, how'd you get into this? You know, I've really always had a passion for, um, I mean, I've been in the ortho industry, like I said, since I got out of high school and okay. um, dental and dental and ortho. And I really, I feel like just as a business owner uh, in between my dental and ortho industry career, I really have a passion for just growing practices and empowering doctors. And um, I've had uh, success in managing practices and uh, being a successful TC, uh, taking practices that maybe have some uh, challenges. They're not able to reach their full potential. They need support and help of an expert. And right. um, so I started last year and i work with practices all over the country and it's it's very rewarding for me isn't it i love this industry i like to <laughs> tell people i'm in the smile business my job is to make my customers smile yeah. and their job is to make people smile and as you right. know when somebody gets their teeth straightened white or better it changes a life that you know and, and it's incredible to be able to see the transformation and to see how people's lives are being changed and to be able to help practices be life changers. For sure. It, it makes it makes me happy. I smile every day doing well, what doing we do. Me so as well. you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it's good to live your dream. You know, dreams are, you know, everybody hopefully everybody's got them and if you can live them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My motto for 2023 is dream big. So I like to help practices just dream big and provide them with tools to make that happen. Great. And one of my favorite songs is Dream On. So oh. hey, that's we'll get a little bit of that in the background here afterwards. <laughs> um, so, you know, when it comes to, to consulting, working with, with the practice, um, what have you found has been the biggest need for a practice in, now in 2023? What's the one thing that, that stands out that, like a sore thumb, that this is what you found as number one that practices are falling short and are needing help with? Yeah. So, you know, I think a lot of it is just aligning systems within the practice. I have a lot of doctors who reach out to me that maybe don't have a practice manager or a practice director, someone to really help them and support them. And they feel lost and they're stressed and they're losing sleep and they kind of don't know where to begin as far as getting their team on board um, to fulfill the vision of the practice. Um, and so I think that that's really just one one area that I think just doctors and practice owners really do need support with. Um, right. You know, doctors go to school to be amazing clinicians and don't always 
um, have the the tools in place or the proper mindset to do the business part of the practice. And right. so having having an expert consultant come in and help them kind of guide them towards success so they can fo- focus on their patient care, I think is really key. I agree. I, you know, I work <laughs> with consultants as a consultant. I believe in them, you know, it's kind of like people and, you know, therapists have therapists, you know, people, right. with, you know, consultants work with consultants. It, it right. believe in, in having a niche and, and knowing what you do and knowing what you don't know is just as important. Uh-huh. You know? And you're right. These guys go to, you know, with not to go to school to learn how to be a clinician and how to learn how to get to te- your teeth, but yeah. you're also running a business. Right. And, and, you know, and let's look at that. You mentioned staff. In my eyes, staff is the most important aspect of a, of a, mm. of a practice. It's a yeah. lifeline. It makes it, it's their touch to the, to the patients. First thing people see or hear. So, you know, what's one thing that you can suggest? Because we're good today going to talk about three tips uh-huh. to accelerate a practice growth, to elevate team performance, and to maximize success. All yes. right. <laughs> All right. So let's jump right in. So tip number one, let's talk about, you know, s- staff. You yes. Know, it's pre- I know it's hard to get your staff on board. I know it's hard for them to care. Um, you know, I can't. How many times I go to a practice and I say, "Oh, can you think you could ask for one review today? Just ask for one. It's only yeah. one way to get a review as to ask, and they can't right. because the staff won't do it. Right? Or to, or to take one picture, one picture for social media, <laughs> one a week right. you know, ahead of the game, but they can't. So right. how do you get the staff? It seems to, so to, easy, to, right? <laughs> right? Doesn't doesn't it? And it, let's you know, and I said, practice. Thought, let's count the five together. One, <laughs> two. Three, four, five. That's all it takes to right. take a picture or ask for a review. But right. obviously, the, the staff can't, you know, it's hard for them to break the mold. So, how do you, you know, elevate team performance and get them on board? What's one, you know, bit of a tip that you give somebody today to say, "Wow, okay, I could, I could do that." Right. So, I think that something that a lot of offices don't do is really creating clear expectations of their team. So. And that and that comes from the point that you hire them and they walk in the door on their very first day. They need to have very, very clear expectations on what's expected of them, um, documented in writing and but but make it fun. I think if you you know, I think a lot of doctors are always um, in the mindset that they need to hire employees that have tons of experience. That's not my motto. I hire integrity, enthusiasm, passion for this industry. And I think if you hire the right people, the rest is really easy. They don't right. have bad habits and they and they they employees really do want to serve a greater purpose. They don't want to come in and collect a paycheck. They really want to feel they want to have the ability to be creative. They want to have a little bit of ownership. So I I I love having my my team members have a little side piece. So whether that's okay you're in charge of the website, you're in charge of external marketing. I want you to be in charge of our social media. But I think if everybody comes together and comes, you know, together as a team, then they can make all of that happen and, and have a greater purpose on growing the practice rather than just coming in and, you know, doing their checklist of, you know, seeing patients or scheduling appointments. How do you get this team to buy into change. Change is so hard. And if, if, if you got a, a advanced practice and the people have been with you for four, five, six, 10 plus years, yeah, how do you get them to change and say, okay, you, I want you to do something else now. In addition, they'd be like, well, I'm so busy, doc. I can't do that. So yeah. how, do, how do you overcome that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's challenging. Again, I think if you have the right team in place, they're going to embrace change and you need to make, I mean, you might have a couple of employees that that don't want to grow with your practice. And and then you might have to have the tough conversation or tough thoughts about, are they doing what they need to do for your team? Are they serving right. you and your practice and your team and, you, and, and your community and fulfilling your vision the way that you see it? And sometimes you might need to have a tough conversation. And if that employee isn't on board to you know grow with your practice, then you might need to free up their future um, and and Forbes. find someone who's who's ready to serve a bigger purpose. What would you say would be the number one carrot to put in front of somebody or a team to get them on board? Because a lot of times, financial isn't the answer. And yeah. I've got a lot of practices that they can't even find the right people, and they said they'll pay whatever it is to get a good staff member. They can't even find right. it. So you know, besides putting that dollar, you know, thing there, yeah. what else can you use as an as an incentivization to get the team on board? 
Yeah. So um, I love incentive driven practices. So mm -hmm. I, I I actually do teach that to to my doctors um, as a team, as a TC, as a practice manager. Um, money talks. It doesn't have to be some astronomical amount. It needs to be a, a genuine service that the employee is providing. Um, but I love team based incentives. Mm -hmm. And um, but I guess another carrot is you really just need to make sure that you show consistent value to your team. So that's team building events. That's uh, team, you know, training. You know, you want to be able yep. to help them grow personally and professionally. And I think that if you make that a huge part of your practice, it is going to bring your team closer together. They're going to want to have each other's back and they're going to see what the what the greater purpose is. Can you give a couple of examples of some team building events that you put together that have been successful? Yeah. Um, you know, it could, I mean, I guess you really need to chat with your team. I also, um, I often have the team members make suggestions. It could be simple things, um, going to one of those, you know, cooking kitchens where you prepare a meal together. Right. It can be an escape room. It could be bowling. It can be, you know, you have a nail salon on wheels that comes and gives manicures Love to that. the, to the team. So there's, okay. you know, all sorts I've done where I go to, um, so I'm in Orange County, California. So I've done team building events where we rent a little, um, a little Duffy boat in Newport Harbor and we, oh, nice. you know, bring food and drinks and, you know, it's just a time just being together outside of the office. Great idea. Um, now let's talk about another, um, tip. So the first one is to get your team on board and embrace them. Yeah. Now the next is change in technology. Um, yes, you know <laughs> technology. I listened to my previous podcast. I constantly am saying the, the the term adapt or die. If you don't adapt yeah. your practice to technologies, you're dead, and right. you have to do so. Um, when I was at the Invisalign Summit several months back, their whole theme was embracing technology and, and, and digital transformations. So, what two technologies would you suggest to practice? You? to be looking into today that can potentially make their life more efficient, effective, and better. Yes. Yeah, so um, yes, definitely embracing and adapting to technology to, to better serve the patient's needs is super important. I will tell you, I am an old school TC and practice manager, old school business owner. So yeah. I like phone calls. I like in-person consultations. I like handwritten thank you notes. I like shaking hands. So even me, it was a challenge. So I understand that doctors might be resistant to embracing technology. No, we don't. We don't do it that way. Um, you know, we don't work on Saturdays. Well, you can technically work on Saturdays because you can do virtual consultations right. or, or a, you know, high some type of a some type of a hybrid. Um, you know, option for your patient. So sure. I think technology for me, um, I love the ICAT CBCT. Um, I'm a big promoter of airway focused orthodontics and the CBCT is truly a game changer. You know, you still have your, you know, pano and your CEF um, and all of that, but it allows you to see so much more, which we're going to talk about a little bit later today about um, practice niches. Right. Uh, so I would say if you're able to get a CBCT scanner into your practice, it is truly a game changer for treatment planning um, and overall uh, patient experience and efficiency. Right. Um, so let's go right into that. It's a great segue. So, you know, to adapting technology and looking outside of your lane, it's, you know, it's important to be able to, to move, you know, and if you stay in your lane, you know, you might be stuck behind an 18 wheeler and you're never going to get where you want to go, <laughs> you know? So let's talk about how to adapt the, the, the practice and find the niche in using technology because it all works together, you know? For sure. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, the suggestion that you make as far as getting a niche or finding one yeah. uh -huh. and then how to implement it. Yeah, absolutely. So I definitely think that finding a practice niche or niche is super important. Um, that's different than a specialty. So as an orthodontist, that is your dental specialty. But a practice niche is really finding something that um, honing in on a on a on a specific need or service that's tailored directly to your patients. So again, as I mentioned, I have a lot of experience in um, growing practices from an airway focus perspective. That was our niche, and you know, 
maxillary expansion on adults, avoiding surgery, things like that. So find find what yours may be. It may be um, correcting gummy smiles with TADS. It might be alleviating pain through TMD treatment. Maybe you want to highlight that you are a non-extraction practice. So um, finding finding what you're passionate about, um, you know, success that you've had within your practice clinically, and then you need to hire somebody like Dean to <laughs> help market that niche. So then again, making sure that it's apparent on all of your socials and that you're building that um, that social platform and social proof that you have patients who are talking about it and creating that buzz within your community. So, um, you know, I love patient video testimonials. So if you don't have a YouTube channel, get a YouTube channel going and right. get those patient testimonials that talk about how life-changing the treatment was. Um, let's say I can breathe so much better now. I don't have any migraines because my TMJ joints are are positioned properly. So just making sure that you are doing yourself to really set you apart from your competition and yet you're not just straightening teeth. Exactly. All right, quick quiz for you. Oof. What is the number one way to get a testimonial from a patient? Ask. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's all you got to do, guys, is ask. Easy. That's yeah. it. Okay. All right. It's not rocket science here. <laughs> ask. Okay. If you ask 10 people, eight might say no, but you're not going right. to get, you're not going to strike out over 10. I guarantee right. you will get at least one, two, three people say, sure. Right. You know, and, and that's a game changer. We met, right. you know, and when you mentioned social proof before, I can't, you know, I can't say how many times I've, I've mentioned this to clients. I can't <laughs> count that high of how important social proof is. Right. You it can, really you is. Could crow to the cows come on how great you are. And you're the number one provider of this and you've been doing this and that. But if your patients are the ones who tell their friends how great you right. are, yeah. That's, that's the, band, the, the It's the bandwagon effect. That's exactly. Been happening it, it, forever. <laughs> it, it, exactly. And let's finally let's let's talk about you know community involvement. You know yes. most most practices are in a you know unless you're in a major metropolitan city, you're in a community. You're part of a fabric of a community. So what's um, one tip that you could suggest today to be yes. involved in a community? Absolutely. So, you know, I think that with COVID, I don't really like talking about COVID, but it happened, so we need to talk about it. But I think, right. you know, COVID took away a lot of opportunities for you to get out in your community and connect with potential patient families, um, you know, market with other businesses and things like that. And I think people right now are, they're chomping at the bit to get out and connect and be out and get fresh air and meet new people and listen to live music and, you know, things like that. So right. I think connecting with the community is super important. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. So I'm sure that you talk a lot about Dean, the like the marketing sales funnel. And mm -hmm. a huge part of that is that that little phase of the funnel, which is the patient interest. So patient interest is where a potential patient shows interest in your unique services. And this is where community comes in. So the patient realizes that they, you know, have a need or they have an interest in orthodontics and you know, again, you, Dean, you've got your amazing platform of all of your, you know, getting them all, all of that awareness Ooh. online and community kind of fits into that piece as well. So making sure that you're getting out there, this is different than your, uh, you know, branded doctor rewards program. This isn't going to doctor's offices and dropping off batch of donuts. Right. This is connecting with your community, with your schools. So um, a couple of successful uh, situations or scenarios that I've had are um, giving back and volunteering through local charities and nonprofits in your community. Um, right. You could also award a scholarship or, a, you know, start a pay it forward campaign. You can connect with your local school's PTA and sponsor water bottles for their jog -a -thon. You can invite a Girl Scout troop into your office and have them earn a badge. And you've got 12 ready little, you know, little girls and their parents coming into your office, having a great fun day, earning a patch or a badge. And you've got that instant connection um, where you can introduce them to your practice and the wonderful services that you offer. Great. Well, love that. And I, and 
I always told my clients the same thing. You have to be involved. You have to, you know, put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'll get you at the top of Google. There's no doubt about it. And I'll get you, you know, on social media. But from there, you got to help me help you. Yes. And, and, you know, and you, you have to be out there. You're part of yes. the community, guys. So yeah. it's a real important to embrace, you know, some of, the, some of these tips that, that you know, Shelly mentioned here. Um, so I have three final questions for you. Okay. okay. Question number one is if somebody wants to get in touch with you, get more information, learn more about you, what's the best way to do so? Oh, thanks. Right. Um, so you can reach out to me on my website, which is alignmypractice.com. Um, I'm on all the socials, so LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Facebook, so you can always message me that way. Um, I am super excited to be at AAO, so if you're going to be at AAO in Chicago, I would love to meet you. Um, booth 872. <laughs> Great. Okay, now the, the the two most important questions. All right, what is Shelly binging right now? What's what am binge- I binging? What are you binge watching? I just finished 1883. Ooh, good show. Okay, yes, yeah. fantastic. Mm-hmm. I cried my eyes out on the last episode. So know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, oh, and I'm watching. Um, I'm watching Tulsa King right now. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, I, yep, I saw, I'm, I'm a big fan of that one. I, you know, Stallone. Boy, I hope I look half as good as as him when I when I when I'm, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm 60 versus you know 75. Right? Yeah. All right. All right. And the most important question of all. Okay. I just got a text that an asteroid is hitting Earth eight minutes from now. Oh my gosh. What's the last thing Shelley's eating? Oh, what's the last thing I'm eating? Um. Shrimp. Oh, I okay. just spent some time in Georgia okay. and had a lot of fried shrimp. It was okay. delicious. So I would say, I ball shrimp, lamb and shrimp, barbecue shrimp, peeled <laughs> shrimp. So what kind of shrimp? <laughs> That's my forest going there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw uh, his bench. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Savannah. Okay. Yes. Nice. And the okay. part that scene was filmed. So it's oh, funny. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so she's a, she's a shrimp girl. All <laughs> right. Um, Shelly, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Um, guys, it's real important to listen to this, this, these advice here. She knows what she's doing. It's something that I've mentioned many, many times to get involved with the community, to adapt to technologies, and to have your 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 staff is a big, big part of your, of your practice and get them to, on board. So if you do this, you know we know that this will work and change the practice. So thanks so much, everybody, for listening. Everybody, be happy, stay safe, and keep smiling. Listen for our next podcast and you'll get some more great information. Thanks so much, Shelly. Appreciate it. Okay. (laughs) Orthomarketing.com, 360 degree digital marketing solutions for your practice.